cybersecurity, as we all know, is one of the um, pressing hot topics where we have to get better and better uh, because the other attackers, the, the bad ones, also are getting better and better. So I think it's a topic which will um, be here for probably forever. And there are endless topics we can cover when we talk about um, cybersecurity. So um, factually, we picked one topic here, which is one of the intensively discussed, one of the many intensively discussed topics. In that case, I'll talk for the next um, 18 minutes left or so, I'll talk about user behavior being the link between cybersecurity and identity management. And so when we look at these terms of UBA or UEBA, um, I quickly picked up um, a definition. There are many definitions here. Um, it says it's a cybersecurity process about detecting insider threats, targeted attacks, financial fraud. Uh, until then, it's nothing new, I would say, because virtually every cybersecurity technology claims um, to do that, to detect insider threats, targeted attacks, financial frauds. The point where UBA is different, and I'll uh, elaborate on this in my talk, is that it looks at the human behavior in contrast to trust packets that are passing through the network, that other stuff. And, and that's where then this second part or second spe specific element comes in, that it looks at anomalies in these patterns. So the idea basically is to identify where are people um, in their sorts of virtual behavior behaving differently than they usually do or than they are expected to do. So where are the anomalies in these patterns? Um, which then potentially might indicate threat. Um, so it's less device or security events um, than the users. UBA extends this to users and entities, and that's what I want to look at a little bit more in detail. So when we look at many of the um, established and traditional security technologies, many of them take um, a somewhat isolated perspective. So we have a lot of layers there, and you can create whichever picture of such layers you want. So I think there are many of these pictures. Um, in that case, I choose one with data center and physical servers and storage net network. The abstraction and virtualization layers we frequently have today so, um, in our virtualized environments. Um, we also could factor up a little bit of containers and stuff like that. We have the middleware, we have applications, we have data and access. And in fact, all of these layers are under attack. So we have certain types of attack vectors that target at different levels from the um, BIOS up to the um, applications. And obviously we need to counter that. So we have also a variety of security technologies which are built to help us protecting the various layers. Um, and this already, I think, shows a, to some extent one of the challenges we are facing in cybersecurity. So we have a lot of technologies in our IT. We have a lot of different attack vectors. We have a lot of technologies to protect the entire thing, which means we end up in a zoo of cybersecurity technologies. And if you leave all that sort of isolated, it's pretty tough to understand what is happening, particularly because many of these attacks, so the more we look at the um, targeted, the advanced types of attacks, the more they tend to span several of these layers. They span l several systems. And um, so what we can see on a certain layer might be not that problematic, but if you take together all the anomalies, all the indicators you have, the picture might be fairly different. And 
probably many of you have have looked at the blog posts and other types of publications talking about um, talking about the anatomies of attacks and other stuff. There have been several of these published over the past years. And when you look at such um, anatomies of attacks, um, they start with sometimes social phishing. Then there's something happening on the endpoint. Then it's threats from the endpoint. Uh, to some servers, it goes to the next level of servers, it goes after privileged accounts of administrators, it ends at the ground rules, and then things are really becoming bad. Um, so we need something to integrate it, and there's some technology in there, so for, for many years we have this traditional theme, um, which we also have to admit, um, virtually all of the traditional theme vendors have significantly evolved over the past years, moving towards um, things which integrate some part of UBA, some part of other types of analytics, etc. So the traditional theme, in fact, was then collecting logs, collecting events, as a security information event management. In fact, some sort of a packet or event focus, um, however you'd like to phrase it, but it was in fact, there are things happening on the network, on a device, as I've said, or shown in the definition, which are happening at a device, at a network somewhere else and I try to look at these things. So in fact it's we could say this is looking at what is happening. But what is missing in that picture is um, who is doing that. So um, there are some technical things which are happening but the focus which is to some extent lacking in that perspective is the who. And this is in fact where the UBA um, topic steps in and adds identity, adds behavior, adds another level of insight. So basically the same picture here, a little smaller so that I have some room left for uh, the topping, so to speak. Um, what we have here is in fact the perspective of identity which comes into play here. So there are users who are doing that that might be People um, who actively do something, run an attack, or use a system or whatever. So most of them are good, some are fraudulent, some are malicious. That might be also user accounts which are used by someone else. So we have this perspective of also attacks, obviously trying to get, um, get access to other accounts to use them. So we have the identity and access management also as a piece which delivers information about all the authentication, about which access has been used, which data has been accessed. So this obviously somewhere there's some overlap between this data access, data security and the next level, but it's another layer. And factually, this then adds to this entire UBA thing, which then looks at logs and events in the context of user behavior of user activity. Um, so, and it adds advanced analytics and frequently more um, cognitive security beyond theme or on top of theme or um, enhancing theme. So there are different ways to deliver that and I'll touch this also by the end of my speech. So beyond that packet focus, we add another focus, which is the sort of the behavior focus. So we had the what and we add the who here as something which comes into play. And this gives us a different angle and an additional perspective of what is happening. So um, I know that I need to be careful with oversimplifying things, but in the next slide, I just try to, let's say, simplify to the max um, what is, is really happening. So basically, a lot of these technologies are based on, on, on pattern analyzes pattern matching technologies. So technologies which look at certain patterns of behavior and try to figure out anomalies and outliers in these um, behaviors. Uh, the term anomaly versus outlier is usually used as a synonymous thing, unfortunately, uh, because there are slight differences. So there might be things which happen um, willingly, positively, and but not, not too often, while other things really are anomalous in the sense of that shouldn't have happened, that something 
critical we need to look up at, at a different way. So as I've said, it's very simplifying, but basically it's, okay, this user is accessing on Monday, Tuesday, and so on until Friday from Germany. So the, on the one side we have the countries, and on the other side we have the days of a week. So the next week, same pattern here. The week after, oh, an access on Saturday. Then, oh, we have something on Tuesday from the US and from Germany. Strange. Um, oh, we have something on Thursday uh, from the UK, and we have a little bit on Saturday and Sunday coming from Russia in that case. Um, I think I've made a little bit mistake, by the way, in the math. If you have um, looked it up, yes, I've, I've mixed up the Friday and the Thursday here. So at some point, doesn't matter. Anyway, it calculates all that stuff, um, and it comes up with sort of a picture of the behavior. So in fact, what it means is we collect a lot of data of behavior, and then we can identify, as I've said, very simplified. Um, we can identify where are things that are not the normal, and we can go after them. Um, this is basically what is happening. And so we might say there are some things which are regular behavior, some things which are anomalies or outliers, so which are recurring, but still not critical. We have to, ident uh, to analyze that. Um, maybe we can identify it as a standard thing, okay, and say the, the risk is not very big because it's still Germany and Saturday that's acceptable. Uh, while things which then happen in a totally different country obviously uh, become more, more of a challenge. This is basically sort, sort of the way many of these technologies work. So in that case, by the way, there's nothing of AI in. That is just pure statistics nothing else. So we should be very careful with terms like machine learning and AI and blah, 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 because a lot of what is sold as that is not that. It's just simple mathematics. And not simple mathematics. It's mathematics, which is not simple, um, correctly uh, speaking. But it's, it's still not AI. Um, anyway, you could use AI, you could machine learning to to do more on the data, and we see more and more vendors which are doing that. But again, be careful on that. So this is factually what is happening. Okay, that was PowerPoint quickly. So UBA and identity, what does it really mean? So we have this user behavior. We collect um, data in IAM and other, and other sources. Um, so we look at what is happening here. We use then UBA technologies to correlate the data, to analyze the behavior of the user. And as a result, we end up with anomalies and risk. So we have the data analyzed and hopefully understood. And we delivered that information again to target systems. So um, every good security technology not only identifies what is going wrong, but makes it actionable. So that is for, for me always when I look at technologies, this is a, a, a simple writing criteria. If a technology doesn't make results actionable, then I have a challenge with it. So that's wrong. How to fix it? That's always the point. If I can't fix it easily, then <laughs> we are in trouble. And IAM might be one of the systems that uses that information, for instance, for adaptive authentication. So for saying, okay, because I have indicators that there is something going wrong, I request a stronger level of authentication. That would be then the closing the circle and making the information actionable, we have derived. So, and then we analyze again this authentication, and based on that, we can sort of increase our level of security if we use that information right. For instance, by saying the authentication is different. And we see a couple of areas where this comes into play. So, when we look at IAM and IHG, using that type of information, for instance, or in general looking at behavior, then there's the sort of the entry level, which is more looking statically at where do I have anomalies in the access, so the access intelligence, but that is not the, sort of the, what is the behavior part. This is sort of only the entry level. Then we have the next level, which is really is user behavior analytics. So looking at what is happening at runtime, what is happening when the users are working. And we have a couple of, of vendors, for instance, that deliver sort of specific um, targeted incarnations of the entire thing. Um, like privileged threat analytics. So um, privileged threat, threat analytics, in fact, is then something which is focused on a specific group of users, the highly privileged ones, and sort of is a, um, a 
specialized application that is very well trained for specific use cases, high privileged users, in contrast to UBA in general, which is more sort of covering every type of user, every type of access. But we see more and more of these technologies entering also the field of IMIG as something which comes in, but not only that field, also other fields. So anyway, when we look at um, technologies and we, we have a lot of talk also about cognitive security, also in, uh, including the evening event today, um, if I draw such a cognitive security heat map, we can discuss the one or other point, but basically what I said is here, uh, how mature are technologies um, that rely at least in some of their, their implementations on, on cognitive technologies, so beyond pure statistics. And what is the security impact? And user behavior analytics clearly is one of the technologies which already has reached a certain level of maturity, but also has a potentially very high security impact because it really can help us identifying anomalies which are hard to see by just looking at data, by just looking at technical information. So from my perspective, a very promising thing, which is delivered in a variety of forms. So UBA today rarely is available isolated. There are still some UBA pure play vendors, but the majority of them already became acquired or vendors which do something different added it to their technology. So we have it in the security intelligence platform, which we might call the next generation SIEM platforms. We talked about this topic uh, as real-time security intelligence over the past years. So the term um, today commonly is security intelligence platform. We see it in identity governance and administration. We see it as partially also in the endpoint security and particularly the EDR, the endpoint detection and response thing, in DLP, in cloud access security brokers, but also standalone. So there are a variety of ways where we can get this. And I think there's a logic in saying it's um, rather integrated than a standalone solution, just because it's about integrating a lot of data, making concrete use cases and making it actionable. And just understanding the behavior is not enough. It's about understanding what do I do with the information I have collected. With that as a quick intro to the entire um, conference, um, UBA as one of the technologies is one which will be covered in a couple of other sessions. We will have a lot of other security technologies. And with that, I'm at the end of my first presentation um, during this event. We have one or two minutes left for questions. So if there are any questions, we can pick them. Questions? If, it, if it's too early in the morning, I fully understand that. OK, Barbara. <laughs> Uh, wait for Mike. Uh, in your integration picture, I saw one thing you didn't add, and there's maybe a reason for it. You didn't put in risk management. Um, so it's that usually I, I don't see any risk management vendor which has UBA as part of its technology. Risk management by, be, might be a consuming application. So obviously what you identify, the risks, um, ideally, they flow into your risk management up to the top level of your business risk and say, okay, we have certain risks here, but it's not that we see technology integration in the sense of vendors selling this as part of their risk management uh, products today. Okay, so we are um, about to move to the next keynote. Thank you very much. And right now, it's a pleasure to me to introduce Dr. Thorsten George of um, Centrify. He will talk about how Zero Trust is creating a game-changing security experience. And Zero Trust, I think we all know right now, is the buzzword of the year in um, cybersecurity. But I think there's also not only a buzzword, as with most buzzwords, there's something behind that. And I'm very curious about what Thorsten George will tell us about what is behind the buzzword. So thank you. Welcome, Dr. Thorsten George.